Good afternoon, everyone. It is really our honor and a privilege to be able to talk to you today about minimally invasive epilepsy surgery. My name is Fyodor Panov. I'm one of the neurosurgeons here at Mount Sinai, and this is Jenna Yu, one of our excellent epileptologists. And again, the, the goal for today is gonna be to discuss what happens when you are an epilepsy patient who's coming to our center. So when we meet the patients with epilepsy first, um, we are able to control their seizures about 70% of the time. So about 70% of the people with living with epilepsy are very well controlled with medications and they can really live a normal life. And about 30% of patients are unfortunately um, still having seizures despite being on two or more medications. Um, we know for a fact, actually, if you fail two medications for seizures, the chance of a third medication to control your seizures completely is less than 20% chance. So we know that epilepsy surgery can really help much more than taking too many medications and people do suffer from medication side effects. So um, we, all, we wanted to really talk about epilepsy surgery and the first response I usually get from patients are, oh no, no surgery for me, no knife on my head, I'm scared. That fear is really there for a lot of people, and we wanted to really talk about minimally invasive surgery that we, how we can help with people with epilepsy, not by just conventional like big scar or something like that, but Dr. Panov will talk, uh, talk more about how we can help them with much more minimally invasive surgeries. So first thing we wanted to know, what we want to know in epilepsy surgery uh, pro, uh, workup is that, um, there are uh, four lobes in the brain and each brain can do kind of different things. So for example, if your seizures are coming from the temporal lobe, it can uh, affect your memory area. So it's kind of an activation of that brain region. So you can have like, for example, a deja vu sensation as a seizure symptom. So each lobe does, does different things. So your seizure symptom is actually a very good sign of where the seizure is coming from. And so the first really good history is very helpful. And then we need to know uh, what, uh, uh, is there any lesion that's causing the epilepsy or if there's anything else that's causing the epilepsy. So we need a very good imaging. And the other thing is a video EEG monitoring to see how, where the seizures are coming from and what the patient is doing during the seizure. So those are the minimum uh, thing uh, that we need to know before we go on to have uh, more diagnostic procedures. Those EEGs are on the scalp, so it gives you a crude idea of where the seizures are coming from. And during the whole process, what we really concentrate on is bringing the patient in early and making sure that they get to meet as much of the team as possible. I think that's the part that makes it easier for the patient and the family. It alleviates a lot of the anxiety, and it also dispels some of the myths that still exist about epilepsy surgery. This is where I think that over the last 20 years we've made just tremendous progress. Uh, unfortunately, there's still an opinion out there that epilepsy surgery is dangerous, mm -hmm. that epilepsy surgery is the last resort, that it is maximally invasive, that you will need to have your hair shaved, you will have a big scar, and you will never be the person that you were. Um, and that has not been true since the 1940s and 1950s. And I think that the best way to explain that to the patient and to the family is during get-togethers just like this one, where we're able to take them through our workup and take them through the possible steps to help them with their epilepsy. And uh, as Jenna pointed out, one of the first diagnostic studies that we would do uh, is called uh, stereo EEG. It's a fancy long uh, name for a procedure where, as Jenna said, instead of having the electrodes on the outside of the scalp, we are, with the patient asleep, able to place them under robotic guidance and as well as sort of a GPS for the brain called neuro navigation. We're able to place them exactly in the areas of the brain where we think the seizures are coming from. That allows someone like Dr. Yu uh, with exquisite accuracy to tell us, is the seizure coming from this area of the brain or an area of the brain that's just half a centimeter away? And I think that that's a great way for us to be able to come up with a plan then for the patient to say, we know where the seizures live inside of the brain, which one of the lobes is affected. And we can go ahead and then move on to the next step, which would be the potential uh, surgical solution to actually cure the epilepsy. Now the great part about the stereo G is it is as minimally invasive as you can get. 
The incision in the skin is done with a 15 blade, which is about three to four millimeters. And uh, the drilling, it's, uh, it's a fancy dental drill. It's only about two millimeters in diameter, which means that the, the entry spots, instead of a big craniotomy, a big opening, and a scar, they heal very nicely with just one stitch. And it is almost unnoticeable as a patient walks out of the hospital because the amount of hair that we have to shave is minimal for each one of those little electrodes that go in. So at that point, we now have found with a minimally invasive approach where epilepsy lives inside of the patient's brain. And then we have a few different potential therapeutic uh, interventions that we can do. And I think the first one that we do still need to discuss for sure is gonna be the resective strategy, which still offers us some of the better outcomes that we have. So Jenna here, just kind of give us your rundown as to what you think about resection as still a valuable option in epilepsy right. surgery. So if we know where the seizures are coming from and if we know that the brain region can safely be moved, that's probably the best option that can give you a cure for epilepsy. And um, <clears throat> sometimes even the resection is not needed as a first step. We now have a laser therapy, which can be a very good first option for a lot of patients um, who especially have a deep lesion where it's not easy to, for Dr. Panov or other neurosurgeons to get into, then laser can be a very good option for those patients. And Dr. Panov wants to, um, will talk more about it. Sure. So um, laser ablation itself has been around for approximately 10 years now. And uh, we know that it's a fairly recent and novel approach of how to be able to help patients with epilepsy. Uh, but just imagine, as Jenna said, that the area that's causing the epilepsy is so deep inside the brain that no matter what we do to get there with open surgery, it increases the possible risk of complications and side effects from the procedure itself. Instead, if we're able to get there again in a minimally invasive manner, and just thread a small, about a two millimeter diameter laser probe to target, and then live in the MRI scanner again with the patient asleep, we're able to monitor the temperature of the brain about every four or five seconds. And what we do is we gently turn the laser on and we allow it to ablate and deactivate the tissue that is causing the epilepsy. Now, the moment that that heat moves a little bit further away and puts any of the other structures of the brain in danger, the laser shuts off which means that we are able to, with minimal possible complications, deactivate the part of the brain that causes the epilepsy. And this is also done through a small incision. This one's about four or five millimeters, usually done in the back of the head in this area. Mm -hmm. And to me, the key of this is the recovery of the patients, mm -hmm. that they're able to really walk out of the hospital the next day. Almost nothing changes right. about their life. You can't again. even tell if the patient had a surgery. Yeah, especially the way that the hair is minimally shaved. Mm -hmm. And they're back at home, recovering after one night in the hospital. So to me, that is a drastic difference from the still very valid resective options that we have, which do take a toll on the body. No matter what it is, if you have an open surgery, uh, that means that you are staying in the hospital for two or three days. And the headaches and some of the nausea potentially goes with it. Mm -hmm. Now, thankfully, even those resections now are minimal because with something like Stereo EG, we were able to decrease the size of the actual craniotomy that we have to do. Right. But still to me, the laser is a great way to approach it. And specifically because the outcomes are almost as good as that open surgery. Right, so it's uh, for some patients, not for all of them, but a lot of patients can benefit from this minimally invasive surgery first. And then um, this can actually potentially um, change the drug resistant epilepsy to drug responsive epilepsy so their seizures are easier to control with medications, easier to decrease the amount of medications or a number of medications mm -hmm. after this minimally invasive surgery. And again, every time that a patient goes through this and has a successful outcome to us, it's again just a reinforcement of how amazing it is what we get to do as a team here and mm -hmm. working together with Jenna. Uh, and then those patients are actually able to go out into the community and to say that, you know, epilepsy has a cure. And it's not one of those things where you have to continue to take medication for the rest of your life. The best possible outcome is that you're seizure free off medication. Now for some patients, that's not a reachable goal. And as Jenna said, if we're able to at least get the epilepsy under control, that with some medications, you're seizure free. Mm -hmm. To us, that is also a big win and it makes a huge difference in the patient's lives. Right. So um, when we are not able to resect or laser the potential seizure um, area, then we are able to even do another procedure, which is 
neuromodulation, um, and that's also that's probably the least invasive epilepsy surgery because it's not removing any of the brain regions, but in, um, in, instead we are putting the electrode right into where the seizures are coming from, and we detect it and program it so that it stimulates the seizure onset and try to prevent it from being a bigger seizure. So that's something that you can also yeah. talk about. And again, I think as a team and as a group, we are very much fascinated and intrigued by this as a possible solution to epilepsy. Um, again, as Jenna said, this is not a resection. This is not an ablation. This is only the modulation of the way that your brain works. And um, a great way to describe it is by saying the beginning of a seizure is a match that's lit in the middle of the forest. Until it spreads, you can go ahead and just pour some water on that match and you're done. But if it spreads far enough, then that small bucket of water that you have is not going to be enough. So what responsive neuromodulation does is it senses the seizure when it's still just one lit match before it turns into a forest fire. Uh, and we're able to go ahead and um, use computers now and microchips to analyze that signal and to send this little signal back saying that match needs to be put out. Uh, I think that this is a great option for really the span of patients that we see here and specifically for patients for whom we could not offer anything else in the past. Right, so I really want uh, people to know that there are these kind of minimally invasive epileptic surgery which can help your seizures and live a better quality of life. And we, can, we are here to help you as a team and if you have any further questions, please feel free to comment below. And um, thank you for listening. Thank you so much. We look forward to hearing from you.